Spare or Affirm that the testimony you're about to do will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. All right, before we get started then, I'll note that uh, the court has previously designated this particular witness as a representative under Idaho's victims laws, so the exclusionary rule would not apply um, as to this witness, whether or not she's watched any trial testimony. So I'll just advise you then, Ms. Shiflett, when you're being questioned, please use verbal responses so we get your answers on the record. Please avoid talking at the same time as anyone asking you a question, wait for their question to be complete. That way we'll also keep the record clear and with those ground rules in mind then, Mr. Ramley, you can go ahead and inquire on your direct examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Shipley. Good morning. Can I please have you state your full name and spell your last name for the record? Summer Shiflet, S-H-I-F-L-E-T. Ms. Shiflet, how do you know the defendant in this case She's Lori, my sister. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Lori Vallodavo. You're fine. She's my sister. And is she your older sister? Yes. And this is obvious without asking Ms. Shiflett, but can I have you clarify for the record how that makes you related to J.J. Vallo and Tylee Ryan? Tylee and J.J. were my niece and nephew. And did you, should, I'm sorry to interrupt too, Ms. Shiflett. If you don't mind, if you can kind of <coughs> lean forward right to the microphone and talk into it, we'll make sure to pick up the recording. Okay. Thank you. And did you play an active role in your niece and nephew's life? Yes. When were you first made aware that your niece and nephew were missing? Um... I think through the media, but probably December of 2019. And at that time, December of 2019, were you in contact with your sister? No. Were you aware of where she was located at that time? No. Ms. Shiflett, have you had a close relationship with your sister? Yes. At some point, did you talk to your sister and ask her about JJ and Tylee's well-being? Yes, um, I think our first contact was um, in February of 2019, after she had been arrested. And what did she tell you about JJ and Tylee? I don't remember the exact wording, but she basically told me that she was aware of where they were and that they were safe. Ms. Shiflett, fair to say that you trusted what she told you? Yes. You believed your sister when she stated to you that JJ and Tylee were safe? Yes. I'm going to draw your attention to early June of 2020, uh, when JJ and Tylee's bodies were found. You testified that you trusted your sister. After the discovery of JJ and Tylee, did that change? Yes. Why? I felt lied to and my trust in my sister was broken. Ms. Shiflett, a recording of a video visit between yourself and Ms. Vallo Daybell has previously been admitted in this case. Do you recall the date of that specific video call? I believe it was on June 24th. I had received a request for me to call her. And just for clarification of the record, do you recall the year? 20, 2020. Your Honor, can I be handed what has previously been admitted as State Exhibit 34A? 
Yes. And, Your Honor, having been previously admitted, I now ask to publish what has been previously admitted and marked as State's Exhibit 34A to the jury. All right. Give me just a moment to confer with the clerks, please. All right. Permission to publish is granted, Mr. Rammel. Thank you, Judge.
Your Honor. That's all I have for this one. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rammel. Exhibit 34A has been returned to the court clerk. Is there a cross-examination, Mr. Archibald? I'm sorry, you had to relive that. So just some foundation to give some background here. You're Lori's younger sister, you said? Yes. And you're one of how many children? I'm the youngest of five. And who's the oldest child? Stacy, my oldest sister. And is she alive or is she deceased? She's deceased. And did she have any children before she died? Yes. And who would that be? My niece, Melanie. Okay. Is that who we've heard the name Melanie Pedreau or Melanie Pulaski? Is that Stacy's child? Yes. And then who's next after Stacy? Alex. And then Alex Cox is who we've heard that name during this trial as well. How much older is he than you? I think eight years. Okay. And then who's next after Alex? Adam. And Adam Cox, where does he live now? St. George, Utah. Okay. And then, and he was a friend of Charles Vallow? Yes. Okay. And then who's next after Adam? Well, my parents had a child that died. Her name was Laura Lee. We called her Lolly. But she died before I was born. Okay. How old was she when she died? Six weeks. Okay. And then after her, who was next? Lori. And so Lori is how much older than you? Two years. And so you and Lori grew up together? Yes. And you grew up together where? In Rialto, California. And how old were you when you moved away from California? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. How old were you, or how long did you live in California? I think until I was about 18, 17 or 18. Okay. So you and Lori would have been adults by the time that you moved away from California? Yes. So would you describe, how would you describe your relationship with Lori growing up? I feel like we had a close relationship. We had a lot of similar interests and friends in common, and we did a lot of activities together. Go to schools together? Yes. Go to church together? Yes. How would you describe your family life? I think we had a good family. I mean, we had problems, but we also had a lot of fun. And do you remember when Lori, her first marriage? Yes. Do you remember how old she was? It was right out of high school, so I think 18. So she was 18, and you were 16 when that happened? Yeah. And did that marriage last long? No. Do you remember her second marriage? Yes. And who was that to? William LaGioia. And is that the father of Colby, who we met here last week? Yes. Okay. And did that marriage last long? Longer than the first, but not that long. Okay. And then did Lori get married again? Yes. And who was her third husband? Joseph Ryan. And is Joseph Ryan the father of Tylee Ryan? Yes. And during this time of these relationships that Lori was having, did you stay close with Lori? Off and on. When did you get married? In 2000. And so did you have your own life that you were trying to live as well? Yes. And did you try to maintain good contact with Lori? Yes, but we lived in two different states, so it was more challenging. Okay. 
And you have children of your own? Yes. And how many children do you have? Three. Okay. And uh, do you recall when Lori separated from Joe Ryan? Yes. And uh, and did Lori protect Colby and Tylee from Joe Ryan? Yes. And so uh, when you talk on this uh, on this phone call with your sister Lori, um, that you would have never done anything to harm your children. Is that the way you felt? Yes. Yeah. And that's because of seeing her raise Colby and Tylee and JJ. Yes. Did you also get to know uh, Charles Vallow? Yes. And uh, how did, if you can briefly tell us about the relationship between Charles and Lori? I think they had a great relationship in the beginning, and they seemed very compatible, and they seemed very happy. And they uh, adopted JJ? Yes. And were you involved in your sister's life when that happened? Yes. Were you involved in your sister's life when Lori and Charles separated? Yes. Uh, were you aware that Charles had filed for divorce? I'm not sure if I knew that until it came out in the media, because I don't think she was ever served. Okay. And then they, so they, as far as you knew, they had reconciled? Yes. Okay. So... Were you a part of Lori's life uh, when Charles and JJ uh, moved to Texas? Yes, not as close, but yes. Okay. Were you a, a part of Lori's life when the whole family had moved to Hawaii? Yes. Now, was Hawaii a destination that, that your family had gone to as well when you were a child? Um, I had been there one time as a child, and then I didn't go back again until I was a married adult. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I did go back one time before I got married, so I had two trips before I got married. Okay. And so uh, was that a place that your father and mother had taken you uh, and the family? Yes. Uh, how... Did you uh, see Tylee grow up? Yes. Uh, how would you describe Tylee? I would describe her as beautiful and witty and very talented in a lot of different ways. Uh, did she uh, have health issues in her life? Yes. Uh, do you remember what those were? She had pancreatitis several times. And, and do you know what that is? It's a swelling of your pancreas. Okay. Was that something that required hospitalization? Yes. Okay. And were you able to see Tylee and Lori together? Yes. And can you describe that? I think Lori was a loving mother, and Tylee adored her mother. They had a. They fought sometimes. Tylee had a little sassy streak in her, but um, I always felt like Lori was very patient with her. Were you ever concerned about the safety of Tylee around Lori? No. Uh, would you ever imagine your sister? Uh, wanting to kill her kids? No. Would you ever imagine your sister being involved in conspiring to kill her kids? No. <laughs> now, uh, the way you were raised, were you raised in, in a way to believe in Jesus? Yes. And, and the Jesus that you were taught about, was that a, a Jesus who was kind and loving? Yes. And is that how you were taught? 
Yes. And is that how uh, Lori was taught? Yes. And is that how Lori taught her children? Yes. So, um, did you ever hear uh, your sister talk about multiple lives? She's, she, she and Alex had both mentioned that to me, I think, in late 2018. Yeah. It's the first that, time. Was that something new? Yes. Was that something that you had been taught as children? No. Uh, did you ask Lori where this new belief was coming from? I don't know if I asked her that directly. Uh, did she talk about multiple creations? Yes. Uh, being reincarnated as different people over the eons of time. Is that what she was telling you? Not with the word reincarnated, but yes. Okay. That, so they weren't using the word reincarnated, but multiple probations, multiple creations. Correct. And is that something new that you had heard? It was new to me. Uh, had you ever heard Lori be, talk about being someone in another life prior to late 2018? No. At, at, at this time in late 2018 or early 2019, did she tell you that she had been someone else in another life? Prior to 2018? Prior to 2018. No. In late 2018 or 2019, did she tell you that? Yes. Did she, did she tell you about her previous lives? Yes. Did any of that make sense to you? Not really. Uh, did you believe it? I tried to. I wanted to believe her, but it didn't make sense. Did she tell you in late 2018, 2019 about zombies? Let me think about that for just a minute, Mr. Rammel. Can you further explain why you think the exception would not apply here and why this would be hearsay? <laughs> All right, what's your response to that, Mr. Archibald? Your Honor, Your Honor this is just some foundation. I think the jury's already heard bits and pieces of this. This is just to confirm that information. Uh, it's been admitted in the state's case in chief, and I do find that it's relevant and would not uh, be hearsay. So I'll overrule the objection and allow the witness to answer that last question, which was, uh, and I'll just site did she tell you in late 2018 2019 about zombies was the question so you can answer I don't recall her ever telling me about zombies that word I don't remember her ever using that terminology okay uh, did she talk to you about her ability to cast out evil spirits I believe so uh, did she tell you about light and dark scales? Yes. And is that something that you'd heard before that time period? Never. Uh, did she tell you that she was a goddess? I don't recall if she used that terminology. Did she tell you that she was a leader of the 144,000? No. Did she tell you that there was a new church called the Church of the Firstborn? I don't recall her ever telling me that specifically. Were you concerned about your your sister with her new beliefs? I don't know that I was concerned about C 
safety of anybody. I just was concerned. I mean, I, of course I care about my sister, but I didn't really know what to think about it. So I don't know if concerned is the right word. Okay, fair enough. Uh, how was your relationship with, with Alex? Um, I was close with Alex. Now, uh, can you tell the jury what he was like? Well, he was my big brother, and sometimes he was hilarious and fun, and sometimes he was um, kind of crude or obnoxious in a way. And But most of the time, we got along really well, and he was at my house most weekends playing games with my kids. And, and did he have children of his own? No. Uh, did he uh, s suffer a brain injury as a teenager? Yes. And what, was that from a car accident? Yes. And did that uh, brain injury in that car accident, did that affect him? I believe it did. Uh, was he different uh, after that car accident than he was before? He seemed almost stuck in making like teenage decisions. He got in his car accident at 16 and he kind of made decisions like a 16 year old most of his life. So he was, uh, it, that's what you observed is that he was stuck as a teenager. In his decision making, yes. Do you stay in touch with Colby Ryan? Yes. And uh, Colby had previously stated my mom spent her whole life protecting us kids. Would, would you agree with that? Yes. Colby also stated after she met Chad Daybell, she changed. Would you agree with that? Yes. Thank you for your testimony. All right, thank you, Mr. Archibald. So to clarify there, counsel had requested of the court prior that the defense was going to call Ms. Shiflett as their own witness, so the court permitted uh, the defense to go beyond cross and have a direct examination essentially there. So with that then, Mr. Rammel, if you'd like to conduct cross and or redirect, you can do so. Ms. Shifflett, just a, a couple questions for you. I'm going to draw your attention back to the time period in which uh, you were made aware uh, that JJ and Tylee were missing. You testified that your sister told you that she knew where Tylee was? I don't remember if she used that wording, but yes, that was what was relayed to me. Okay, and conveyed to you that she knew where JJ was? Yes. She told you that they were safe? Yes. Ms. Shifflett, she lied to you about them being safe? I believe so, yes. Judge, that's all I have. All right. That will conclude then the testimony of Ms. Shifflett. Is she allowed to be excused from any subpoena she's under at this time? All right. Does the uh, defense have any reason to uh, not have her released from the subpoena? All right. Thank you, Mr. Archibald. Ms. Shifflett, then you can go ahead and be escorted out of the courtroom by the bailiff. Thank you for your testimony. Oh, I appreciate the clarification. Yes, she is, and an excused uh, witness can also maintain. I just was having her taken back so she's able to remain. And then the state, you can call your next witness at this time.